Hello. My name is Travis. This is Oscar Mike Radio Number. Got a special guest here, a lady who caused me a lot of pain and suffering. <laughs> but in a good way. <laughs> I want to introduce to you uh, Navy veteran, uh, yoga practitioner, and teacher extraordinaire, and all around savage badass, Heather, Heather well, Clark. Welcome to Oscar Mike Radio. Thank you for having me, Travis. So, so happy to see you. It's been so long. Well, the reason I'm chuckling, folks, is the first time we met, it was in September of 2020 at the Irreverent Warriors Nashville event, and you were doing a yoga class. Yes, yes. And yes. Danielle and Cindy were like, you're coming to the yoga class, right? I'm like, well... I just did a meet. Uh, I'm kind of like beat up. I'm not really sure it's good for me. And well, when Mama Bear and Danielle say you're coming, you're coming. You're, you're coming. There's yes. there's no no arguing about that. <laughs> and so we get there. And we're in this beautiful place in downtown Nashville, and I'm like, okay, this is cool. And all of a sudden, you start asking me to put my body in positions that I didn't think was possible for a guy my size, Heather. Absolutely, it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> you did good, too. You did. You did really well. But it, it brought around a lot of questions because a lot of your poses were almost like combat warrior poses. Yes. And, and combat and yoga is not a thing I really associate with each, with each other. But, you know, we're doing like, you know, stances with like you know dry fire positions yes. right 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 so you know to start off with tell us a little bit about yourself in the navy and then i really want to dig into this whole yoga thing and then folks she has a whole, talk about mission in flight talk about on the move we're just getting started so so why don't you tell us about your navy experience my navy experience actually started as a military spouse in the navy um we were just young kids and um, didn't really have a whole lot of direction. We became parents at a young age. And uh, my husband at the time, his I had you know uh, military service in my family. My grandfather was a World War II uh, B-17 bomber. So I grew up with all the veteran events. He had a lot of Navy in his family. And so he said, hey, let's think about joining the Navy. And we did, and, and we both loved it. And I loved it so much that I wanted to become part of it myself. So um, after 9-11, he had actually just gotten out and we moved back east to, uh, to New Hampshire to start a business back there. After 9-11 happened, I said, you know what, I'm going to do this. You're out. I'm going to go in. Uh, became an intel analyst, served in a couple different kinds of commands, anywhere from naval intelligence to air squadrons. And then I did a tour in Afghanistan uh, with SEAL Team 6. I was out there with a couple different teams and uh, had a blast, loved it. Um, got out, you know, because uh, family came first. So I had to put my family first. And even though I was heartbroken to leave the lifestyle, um, I refound it actually, you know, recently through organizations like Irreverent Warriors. Yeah, and that's how we met. We met through River Warriors. So, so how does yoga fit into all this? So I had been doing it off and on for years. I was introduced to it in college in a physical education class where we had to pick different exercises and stuff to do. And so I tried it and I really, really liked it. And I kind of kept doing it. And when I was actually out um, with the SEALs, I, I walked in the gym one day and they were doing it. Really? I was like, wow, you guys, you guys do yoga? And they're like, yeah, we, we have our own teacher at home. You know, so at that level of, you know, warrior, like ultimate warrior, they practice and embrace anything that's going to increase their mental and physical edge. And so that kind of opened up my eyes to doing it more when I came home. And then when I, about a year after I came home, I started having some issues with combat related issues with PTSD um, anxiety, depression, all of that stuff. And even though the VA, they put me through a couple different therapy programs, which helped a little bit, medication helped a little bit, but it just wasn't getting me over the hump of what I needed. And so I started adding yoga back on a regular basis and it worked so well that I decided to become a teacher. 
and I specifically wanted to teach veterans um, that were struggling with some of the same issues that I was. And even though it's not a cure-all for everything, it is a good supplement to add, you know, and now we have the science to back it up by universities like Harvard, by numerous neurologists that I've talked to in the last uh, couple of years. They're really making progress on being able to um, get statistics to back up why yoga and meditation and holistic practices work. So it's more of a wellness thing. It's a component of overall wellness. Overall wellness, yes. It, it's one element that you need as a veteran when you're coming out. That's just one element is your mental and physical health. Awesome, awesome. So you, you served in the Navy and did all kinds of cool stuff. And you really started embracing yoga and you separated. Did you, did you always carry yoga with you throughout the rest of your naval service when you met the SEALs till now? Or, or when did this become like a real like calling for you? It, it was just kind of something that I did that I also kind of tried to get my kids to do reluctantly sometimes <laughs> to it. Um, but it, it really became a calling for me. You know, I, I really believe in signs and I, I wasn't happy in my government job. I, I had a decent government job that I could have kept and, you know, had a decent retirement. I, I just knew there was something else out there and I missed my veteran community so much. It, it just like, my heart just ached to be around that uh, lifestyle and so I decided, when I decided to become a yoga teacher, I was actually looking online for some schools. And I, it was really important to me to have a traditional school. I didn't want just to learn the moves. I wanted to learn the philosophy behind it as well. And so I picked one that was called Sana Yoga and sent them an email. The next morning I got up, went to work as I usually did down at the federal building. And about two blocks before I got to work, I just looked to my left. And there was Sana Yoga. I had driven past it every day for two years and never noticed it. Walked all around that area, going to restaurants and meetings and stuff, and I had never noticed it. And so that to me was like a huge sign that you have a lifestyle change coming. And so I quit my government job. Um, I actually started substitute teaching to pay the bills. And that was a good choice, even though I had a huge pay decline teaching kids for some reason gave me a whole different presence in the yoga studio with adults. And so as I started looking more at this, I, I ran into a former secretary of the VA, John Garcia, who I'd met previously um, in some different conferences a couple years prior. And he kind of started telling me about how the government was looking at bringing more yoga teachers into the VA hospitals, but they wanted veterans teaching because he he mentioned a terminology to me called vet speak, is that we know how to speak to each other. You know, we know the lingo, we know the movements, we know the culture, because it is its own subculture, really. And so that kind of got me thinking, and as I started talking to different VA directors across the country and different veterans, um, the two things that really stood out to me were that veterans really weren't interested in doing yoga. Even if they brought it to the VA hospitals, they, their perception was a westernized perception that it was for women, um, that it was just stretching, and it just wasn't like a cool guy thing to do. That was something your girlfriend or your wife did, you know, kudos to them. You know, they didn't really want to have anything to do with it. And uh, a you're conversation not far wrong. I, you're not, you're not, <laughs> they're not. And a conversation I had with my brother is, you know, he was a rugby player in college, and they're a rough and tough bunch, those rugby players. And he said they, they tried to bring in a yoga teacher, just like maybe the NFL would try to bring in a ballet teacher. There's a reason behind why they do that stuff. You know, for NFL, it be so that you have more balance, you know, so that you can um, move and stuff and not fall over and, you know, get away from guys. That was kind of the purpose of that. And for, for this... Um, they just wanted to be same kind of concept for rugby. They wanted them to be able to have better balance and move quicker. And so he said, you need to disguise it. You have to find some way to disguise it. The guys are going to want to do it. You can't do this, this westernized approach. And so that got me thinking, because I, you know, I come from a, a family of hunters in Wyoming. We all have been shooting since we were little. And I started looking at dry fire 
positions. And I thought, wow, these are very similar, like the geometry, the angles, the breathing, everything is very similar. So that kind of got me on the road of trying to incorporate um, military culture into these yoga classes. I started looking at the PRT requirements, the physical readiness training that we're required to do every six months. Um, at all of the stretches that we do beforehand, 80% of them were yoga poses. Um, I started looking at marching commands. There were marching commands that were very similar to how you position your body in yoga. And so I just started creating classes around that in a way that people thought that they were doing a regular stretch like you would do in the military. But then I would adjust it a little bit and soon you would be in a full on yoga pose and not know it. And um, in fact, when I taught uh, this new class is called uh, Yogic AF in uh, Tucson, people didn't realize they were doing yoga until the very end. And someone, someone said, oh my gosh, she tricked us. We're doing yoga. Like, so they don't even like realize it, which is cool. And which is the exact objective that I have for getting them introduced and saying, I had so many guys come up to me like, you know what? That was actually kind of fun. That, that wasn't what I thought. And uh, I actually even had a, a, a Mustang officer that I met at the last Irreverent Warrior hike that's now a therapist. He said, it's funny because, what did he say? Um, you tell guys that they've been doing yoga this whole time since basic training, since boot camp, and they look at you like you just gave them an oatmeal cookie and told them it was chocolate chip. Hey, 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 I <laughs> love oatmeal raisin cookies. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> They're just like, what? You don't know. No, they like can't believe it, but it's true. You know, it's it's been around thousands of years for a reason because it, it works. It's been combined with different martial arts throughout history because it works. It's just uh, one component in, in a training system, really, that can make you elite. Yeah, that, that's what, you know, all kidding aside, um, you know, <laughs> once I got to those kind of poses, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is how I'm supposed to stand when I hold my sidearm. This is... This is the kind of, of, of breath discipline, discipline you're supposed to have. And, you know, for me as a weightlifter, I'm flexible, but I'm like, okay, if, if, if I got motivated enough to actually, you know, get good at this, this could have benefits elsewhere. And you mentioned irreverent warriors, you know, was it irreverent warriors that really kind of helped you embrace this and, and make this a thing where you can bring it to not only the hikes, but to other people, or was this something you were looking for to doing all along? Um, I, I was looking because the, the government contracts that were coming up were in some really obscure places that I would never in a million years move. <laughs> um, and they just didn't really have a, a digital platform. Um, this is right before COVID happened. And once COVID did happen, all the yoga studios closed because I, I had a new veteran program in Albuquerque that I was ready to like uh, pull the trigger on in April. Um, all teaching stopped. I had to find a way to get a digital format. So originally I was going to film a fitness series um, of these classes. And so as I was kind of looking at doing that, I was going to get trained in um, advanced firearm training with uh, some SEAL Team 6 members that I know back east that have a company back there to train and I was going to do all of this on this New York trip that I had planned. I was picked, my company was picked um, by Hofstra University as a business that they wanted to, to train and kind of promote. And then, of course, that trip got canceled. So I thought, man, what am I going to do now? And uh, I had this crazy idea for this photo shoot because the thing that I, that I was really feeling strongly in teaching yoga to veterans um, is that we kind of lose purpose when we get out, but we still have that warrior spirit within us. And so while I was waiting for other things to open, because I, I really thought things were going to open by summer. And of course that didn't happen. So while I was waiting, I, I was kind of messing around with one of my old friends. It's a amazing photographer back home. And I gave her this idea about this Viking photo shoot that we could do yoga poses and swords and and all kinds of cool stuff and kind of have fun with it. And um, we started messing around with photography and some designs. And when we put them online, people were like, hey, where can I get that on a shirt? You know, or, you know, we got published in a magazine for, for that photo shoot. So that really kind of started the ball rolling 
on me thinking, what's my next step? If the yoga studio is still open, how can I still get yoga classes out to veterans? And so at that, about at that time is when I had met David Johnson from the David Johnson show. Oh yeah, yeah. And so he loved the idea. And so we kind of started talking. He, he became kind of my unofficial business mentor. And then it came to a point where he's like, you know what, I, I kind of want to do this company with you. I think it's really amazing what you're doing. I think we can do a lot of good. Let's start a company together. So that's kind of something we've been working on is a wellness company that will, the first part of it, the e-commerce part of it is if you think kind of Grunt style, but yoga, it'll oh, be cool. t-shirts and designs, you know, that kind of make light on yoga that are cool designs. We're looking at a really amazing uh, tattoo artist actually back in Virginia beach that does a lot of the steel teams uh, designs to do our shirts. And then we'll be selling like yoga accessories, you know, mats and tools and keep kind of adding on as a wellness company, not a yoga company, but a wellness company for veterans. But the coolest part of that company is, I was like, I still want to offer free yoga to vets. So the content side of the house is going to be a free veteran yoga channel. It's going to be all veteran teachers. Uh, most of my teachers are Marines, believe it or not. Um, so many Marines do yoga, it just blows my mind. Um, I'm going to try to bring in some martial artists um, to do some of those classes. So you can see that a lot of martial arts is very similar to yoga. And that'll be something that veterans can access all over the world, not just American veterans. It'll be the, the first of its kind. Um, we'll also do education on the science. Um, we'll have blogs. We're going to have a, a veteran yoga retreat this uh, summer in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, oh, nice. uh, where I grew up. Yeah, it's going to be just amazing. And so, one, one of my Marine buddies just uh, moved to Wyoming. He, he absolutely loves it. Oh, oh yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It's, um, it's going to be a, a yoga retreat that's not just yoga, but we're going we're gonna to have horseback riding and shooting and, and boating and hiking and kind of just an all-encompassing thing. We're bringing Ryan Hendrickson that just wrote Tip of the Spear. Oh, He's going to do him, a book we signing. Met, we met him at the uh, Irreverent Warriors event. Yes, yes. He's a great guy. And so he's going to be doing a book signing preceding the, uh, the retreat. And so we're just kind of finding all these different avenues to, to get yoga out to veterans as much as possible. And we'll start actually live classes because Danny's been pushing me like, you need to do some live classes. And so uh, probably the end of this month, we'll start with some live classes until the YouTube channel is uh, ready to go. Awesome. This is amazing. I mean, you know, my first meeting with you is like, okay, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> so, well, folks, you gotta understand. I mean, there's a lot of extenuating circumstances around that. I'd never done it before, just competed and, you know, sat in a plane and I'm like, people pay to do this. This is, this sucks. I thought I was more flexible than that. And, and so, you know, before we go into the next thing, I'm like, how does somebody who's maybe, you know, not a typical, because when I think of yoga, I think of, you know, a five foot seven, five foot 10 guy, 160 pounds doing it, not, uh, you know, a 280 pound weightlifter doing this, you know, and it's different disciplines. So how, how does that all work when you're trying to get used to the movements? Is it just simply doing it? So the, th the thing about yoga is you really have to have patience, right? Like when you're going Ooh. to the gym, you're not going to just go in there and just lift the top weight that you want. You have to work your way up to it. True. And so that's the kind of the same thing with yoga is because you're putting yourself in positions that your body's not used to being in. They're awkward positions. There's no getting around that. But as you go along, just like anything, um, just like you learn how to play an instrument, you know, you have to practice, practice, practice. Pretty soon you pick up the instrument and you start playing it. Pretty soon as you go along with yoga, you'll notice that you just go right into the poses without even thinking about it because your body has made that brain connection of where it needs to go. And these poses, why they're so good for veterans is because especially in your hip area, um, you access neural circuits in your nervous system that are damaged during combat. And so if you're doing yoga, and you're breathing and doing all the breathing correctly, that combination can actually rewire your nervous system and, and help with trauma and help with PTSD and help with physical ailments. 
And so you just have to really give it time and um, you don't have to be perfect. You know, yoga is awkward. And if you can just stay consistent with it, that's when you'll start to see results and you'll, you'll start to feel better. Well, it was, it was a good experience. And I, I, I want everybody to understand it wasn't like a bad experience because it was on 9-11. We were there for the Reverend Warriors event. Um, I was with, you, you know, Mama Bear and Danielle, Travis McVeigh and uh, Scott Hussein. And it was a really surreal time because we're there doing this on a day that meant a whole lot to us. And I really had a chance to, once I got into the, the, the rhythm, I don't know if I'm saying that right, mm -hmm. to reflect on the ability to even do this. You know, here we are meeting in a public place to do this and remember. And we had construction behind us and it was noisy at the time. And Yeah, but so. I did feel a sense of peace and, and mm -hmm. calm because, you know, I was trying to get in these positions, but also because why I was there and why I was there. So we do this in this park and we do the hike and we go our separate ways. And I have to tell you, since then, it just seems to me, Heather, we've talked a couple of times about stuff, you know, we're both very busy, but it just seems like what from September till now until into 2021, you've really got in a, in a groove on a, on a, your compass is aligned to your direction and you're following it with everything you have. Am I seeing that right? Yes. Um, you know, that hike kind of really, uh, years of planning going into this, that hike really kind of kickstarted and, um, it was so healing for me that it, it just bring me this whole new motivation. It started circulating more ideas in my head of, of what I wanted to do, of what did I wanted to see the future of this company. I wanted to have, I want to have the impact that Irreverent Warriors has. Um, I, I see the impact that it has on these hikes in between hikes as we, as we all network. And that's why I, I wanted to start bringing more yoga to these hikes. And it was just really important for me to be able to introduce my new family members to something that can help them in between these hikes, you know, cause we get all pumped up for these. And then when you leave, you kind of get sad when you, when you leave, we, we need to be there for each other. This is one more way um, that we can reach out and be there for each other and we can find peace. And having people like yourself and, you know, Travis McVeigh, and Scott Husing, you know, Scott's been doing yoga for a, uh, a long time. And just to see all of these pretty prominent people, these leaders that I see in our veteran community out there doing this shows all these other veterans that are going out to hikes like, hey, why don't you try this? You know, we see mama doing it. Mama does it. Let's try it. You know, because everybody um, wants to come together and, and do joint stuff that's really going to make a difference in our lives. And so that really got me kind of spinning on so many different avenues. It, this all kind of happened by accident, honestly. It all started with one podcast and then uh, on Jason Piccolo's show. And he's like, you know, once you're on one, you're just going to start being on more and more. And, and that was the case. And then, you know, I had directors calling me, can you come be a wellness director on our documentary? You know, I had my friend Raymond Lott call me, hey, do you want to be on this new song? And so I just started meeting all these people and they just started calling me up. Hey, do you want to do this? Hey, do you want to be on my book? And it wasn't really planned, um, but it just kind of happened. And I think it's amazing. And my whole life has completely done a 180, um, even in the last four months. And so I just get on for the ride. I don't let things like 2020 or COVID slow me down because um, this is my life and this is my mission. And I'm not going to let anything, you know, keep me from doing it. My ultimate goal is to, to help my veteran community um, get out on as many platforms, media, music, yoga, uh, documentaries, whatever I can to, to get the message out. So before we get into 2021, you're doing a lot of stuff like now. I mean, you have a lot going on right now. I, I was curious if you kind of go into that because it, it's, evident that you are reaching people and resonating with them but you've got some really like 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 impactful things going on very recently would you would you care to share those with us 
Um, one thing personally in my life that um, I had to make the decision for my, for my own mental health was that I needed to move from where I was from. Um, and I had really thought long and hard about this, um, where I wanted to go, where I felt really good energy, really felt good people. And the options really were kind of California and Florida. Um, I had a lot of friends. I was stationed in San Diego. Had a lot of friends there. Loved California. Um, but Florida, Florida had been stationed there as well. And I met a group of guys from uh, Boca Raton, three Marines that own a gym there. They also have a podcast called um, Two Marines and a Mic. They were doing such amazing things in their veteran community, um, just consistently out there um, on the front lines doing stuff that I really wanted to be a part of that because I wanted that Irrevit Warrior hike um, high, as it were. I wanted it all the time. I just wanted to be around veterans all the time as much as possible. And so I made the decision to, to go to Florida and move there. And when we went down for the Key West to River Warrior Hike a couple of weeks ago, it was our last day there. And we were kind of waiting around for everyone to show up for breakfast. And we were hanging out at this marina. And this guy had this beautiful sailboat. And we kind of got talking to him. And I was like, hey, can we, can we take a tour? He's like, yeah, sure. So we went in there. And I was surprised at how big it was. It was like three bedrooms, two baths, and had plenty of room. And he had a sailing um, business. And... Uh, just a series of people I met within that week from him to, you know, uh, a Marine that's a, a diving instructor down there, Jay Fenner. Um, I thought, man, this, this would be pretty cool. This would be a complete life change. I'm not just moving to Florida. I'm going to, I'm going to get on a boat. I'm going to learn how to sail it and uh, just kind of live the, uh, the beach bum life. Cause Key West is just, it reminds me of New Orleans, but it, it's clean <laughs> and it's, and it's, um, it's got that Northern, you know, Caribbean feel, and it's so small that you could basically don't even need a car. You just kind of walk around. And I thought, man, this is the life that I want. I want the, I want the good Island life. That's, that's what I had to do for me. And, you know, um, from that, um, stems many more, um, works and projects that I can do for veterans while I'm there. Yeah. But you were traveling, um, as recently as a couple of weeks ago. And that seemed like a really big adventure. I don't know if you want to talk about that, but that really seemed like wow. it wasn't just like a, like a trip or a, a, a fling, like it was almost like a mission. And, and if, if yes. you would, I, I want to hear about that. If you're going to share it with me. Please. So it was kind of a spontaneous thing. Um, my friend Keith Carraway and I have been helping this friend. His name, his name is Michael Enright. Okay. And Michael's, Michael's story is that he was an actor in Hollywood. He's, he's originally from Britain. And he saw all the stuff that was happening in the Middle East, especially Syria. And when he had watched a video of a journalist um, being beheaded, it was by a terrorist from Britain. And that really impacted him. And so he gave up his whole acting career. He just left. He got a plane ticket to Syria. Um, he showed up and said, how can I help? And he was over there for um, a couple of years fighting. Um, no pay, barely any kind of even military gear. Um, he really was in the trenches of that war. And that's kind of how he came into contact with Keith is that they were in the same areas. And um, Keith was a prior army uh, special forces and they became friends and they stayed in touch. And while he was gone, his visa had expired. And so he has been trying to get back to the States um, for years now. And he has basically been kind of just like, he's been in South America and Belize, he's um, in Mexico right now. And this is a man that gave up, you know, a whole career that it's not easy to break into Hollywood. He gave all of that up because he has a good heart and now he, without family, without a wife or kids, he's all by himself. And he's still stuck in Mexico. He's, and we have no, been trying. He has kids? He does not. Okay, he does right. not. He's right. completely by himself. And so we've been trying to get um, his visa approved, trying to get politicians, you know, on board with giving him letters of recommendation for all the courageous things that he did. And so he's like, I don't want him to spend another Christmas alone. I'm going to go spend Christmas with him. And I'm like, well, I'm going to go too. So, 
So we just got on this trip and it wasn't really planned and it wasn't planned at all. You know, I drove down to Phoenix to meet Keith. He flew in from DC and uh, we flew into San Diego, got a car, weren't sure if we were going to get over the border. We had our fingers crossed right till the, till the last minute. You know, you have two, two soft in the car and be like, Hey man, we got this. We got this. We'll just adapt and um, we'll, we'll make this happen. And we got across the border, um, got lost several times. <laughs> it was just a, it was a series of events, you know, and, and Michael wasn't giving us an address. And so he was giving us a pen, which we couldn't follow. And he's like, you know, just grab a, grab a local and, and try to get him to, you know, tell you where to go. And we were just like, we're on the side of this major road. Where are we going to find a local? And out of nowhere, this guy comes and he walks around the car and we're like, excuse me, can you help me? And so Michael's speaking Spanish through the phone to him. And he's like, oh, I speak English. I'm a doctor. And I have a clinic right down the street from your friend. So he knew exactly where we were going. And so it was a series of things that just um, all fell into place for us to find Michael. And when we finally got there, we were so happy to see him. He was so happy to see us. We rented this beautiful house on the beach. And we had such an amazing time with him. He's just such um, a fun-loving guy. He was giving us acting lessons, you know, and playing games. And, you know, I love my family and love my kids. But, man, that was one of the best Christmases I think I've ever had. Uh, we had so many adventures. We picked up Athena Ives. Um, he was a, also a Marine veteran. And it was just like kind of the, the four amigos down there. And we had a great time you know, walking around, talking to the people, uh, doing a little bit of yoga by the beach. And it was a very fun time. And that's amazing. I, I'm, I'm interested to learn a lot more about this because um, you, you don't see that a whole lot anymore. I, wh no. Whereas back in World War II, World War I, Hollywood actors, recording artists, Ted Williams, for example, um, you, you know, Jimmy Stewart were all the, the country called, they left their profession behind and went and served. Oh, Elvis Presley. Yeah. All yeah. of them. Yeah. That was a pretty common thing. And I mean, yeah. you don't, you don't see it in this day and age. The, you know, people, um, you know, I don't want to speak for Hollywood, you know, um, they have their causes and stuff, but when you really talk about a boots on ground approach, that guy <laughs> was in the trenches, you know, and, um, you know, something that you brought up, um, too, was red carpet, um, events like you know uh looking at different veterans that want red carpet solutions and i thought that was really great question because i saw two sides of that um i saw one side as the veteran who a lot of times we think we serve and we think that when we get out things should just be handed to us and i'm going to be honest i was i was of that mindset i thought well i served you should give me a job i i was of that mindset because i had been told that. I had been almost conditioned to think that while I was in the military. And, you know, I learned that's not the case. You still have to work just because you're out doesn't mean that things are going to be handed to you. It might be a little bit easier. Um, you might get your foot in the door over somebody else, but you still have to work for it. And um, the other side of the coin that I, that I thought of with that question was, there are so many great veteran organizations out there, but a lot of them have red carpet solutions. They are making, uh, you know, I kind of compare it to a government, not necessarily the American government, any government that makes decisions for the people that are armchair, what I call armchair solutions. They're not really seeing what's happening um, down on the front lines of, of what the people are going through, what they struggle with every day, what problems may arise for them that they never even think of. Um, and I see a lot of veteran organizations, they're kind of in that same mindset. I think they have a good intention, but in order to really make a difference in our veteran community, I think you have to be um, amongst our people. You have to be at things like these are reverent warrior hikes, like Scott Husing showing up, uh, like Dan Eric from Grunt Style showing up. You know, they all have uh, much bigger things going on, but those guys are out there as leaders, they're talking to people. You see Donnie O'Malley at the heights, you know, he's talking to people, he's getting to know them. And that's kind of what I tried to do at the heights too. And what my future goals are is to get to know my people, understand what their problems are, listen to them. If there's anything I can do, you know, provide the resource or point them in the right direction. But I, I really think if you're going to be 
truly successful um, that you can't have red carpet solutions that, that you need to get out there and you need to get your hands dirty. Well, maybe this is a conversation for a different time. The, the other trap I'm seeing on, on my view is you, your, your success, your effectiveness is simply measured by either, you know, how much money you've raised or how much merch you've sold. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'm like, no, I mean, it, it's not about, yes, we need money to operate, but if you aren't able to impact lives, why are you doing it? That's a whole other rabbit hole we're not going to go down right now but you know i think i i when i when we when i met you in september and we talked you know outside of the yoga uh, event you know i got a sense of okay this this person is trying to just that you know get in the trenches roll up the sleeves crew the machine gun and let's figure out a way to actually move forward instead of staying where we are and I'm, I'm extremely excited about what you're doing in 2021. So here's, here's my promise to you, Heather. Here's my promise to you. When you get this YouTube uh, channel going with the free yoga lessons, I, I promised Heather Hargrove, you know, army veteran that I would take her advice. Here's my promise to you. I will do, I will do the yoga classes on your channel. I'll record or somehow capture the experience and we'll see awesome. how I do from point A to point B and beyond. How about that? That would be awesome. Yes. There, there actually is, um, I'll send you, there's a video of a guy that I think was walking with a cane and he, someone told him to do yoga and he filmed a series going from the very first class, you know, uh, through the months as he went on. And then pretty soon he threw out the cane and was, is running and so that would be amazing if you did that because well, that's I'm, what that's what we need that's what the veterans need to see they need to see one of their own doing it staying consistent with it and seeing the results well i feel that at the very least i thought about this i'm like it could only help my weightlifting which is precision you know mm -hmm. speed driven mobile um you know a, a, a movement it is so why not add that to my toolbox? Exactly. It is, it is just another tool. And, you know, I don't, I want people to understand, especially veterans, you see all these crazy women doing all these crazy poses on Instagram and whatnot. That's not yoga. That's not. Well, what is that? Because they call it yoga. And I'm like, that looks it's, unnatural. Yes. You know, a lot of that has turned into almost acrobatics at this point. It. It is yoga in the sense that yes, it is a yoga pose, but first you have to know that usually for the average person to get into those poses, you will spend an entire class stretching to get up to that one pose that they just took a shot of. Unless they're incredibly flexible, they may just go into it. But for the average person, you do, you have to spend an entire class, 30 to 60 minutes stretching to get into that pose they just took a photo of. Um, most of the stuff we did in the military stre stretches is, is yoga. That's real yoga. It's about you, uh, you and the mat. You can think of the mat as your own little dojo. It, it's not about impressing someone with a photo. Well, all right. All right. So I'm going to do this when you put it up there. I'm, I'm going to record it. I'm going to show how it impacts my day-to-day -day life and my weightlifting because you know we got a lot going on in that realm for uh this year and next year in 2022 we really do we're already planned out so it can only help it can only help oh absolutely especially and the meditation and the breathing part will definitely help getting back into really getting into a shooting uh frame of mind so it's it's like learning all relearning all those little cues again so it's going to help there it's going to help oh it will I, I guarantee it will. I'm going to do this. I'm, ex I'm excited to see that. I'm really excited. That's that's an amazing, amazing way to show a great result. Well, well, I mean, you know, talk is cheap, Heather. Talk is cheap. <laughs> and, 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 you know, I, I, when, I, when I tell you that I'm savage, the savage doesn't care about how it looks or what people think. He just goes out there and does it. So we're going to do this. Great. And I, I really mean this when I say this. I can't wait to do yoga with you again. Oh, I'm so excited. Yes. You jump on our, jump on the live one. 
this month I will advertise that actually on Facebook and we'll do a, a Facebook live with a bunch of people. Well, I, 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 I will be there and I can't wait to see it. And, you know, again, this, this is why I like, you know, doing the show. This is, this is what it's all about. It's, it's these stories where people might not think they can do something or a person like me who's like, wait a minute, that looks unnatural, not doing it, didn't feel good, never doing it again, where it's like, well, let's, let's, let's review why that is. Mm -hmm. Let's get out of that comfort zone for a little while and, and explore that. And then here's your story of, you know, determination, persistence, resilience, and the, the emotional intelligence to understand there is a problem and the willingness to call people out when they want that red carpet armchair treatment. I think that's the most powerful thing I heard out of this conversation is you're, you're right. People want it just spoon fed to them and you got to go get it right. It's not going to come. Right. Yeah. Them. Cause I, I, you know, I, I tell people, I'm not going to beg you to do yoga. Like I'll show you how to do it, but I'm not going to hold your hand. I'm not going to baby you. Like you need to take the steps and do it yourself. And, um, you not just... baby me in Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> you guys all did great. You did, you did. And I was, I was so happy to have you there. And, um, you know, I made Danny and I were just talking about that Nashville trip and, um, Danny and I have some stuff going on next year too. That's going to be really exciting. And, um, we were talking about um, how amazing that trip was to meet all the people we did and just how much fun that we had with all of you guys. It was life-changing. It, it certainly changed my perspective. And, and, you know, it, it, you planted a seed in the back of my mind. And I'm like, look, because you only stop growing when you quit growing. And I'm like, well, let, let's grow with this a little bit. So seeing your growth and seeing what you're doing, I, I hope it, 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 you know, empowers people to make that change and, and get uncomfortable for a little while until they, they, they get good at something. And that's how you grow is being uncomfortable. Yep. Well, Heather, I, I, time flies when you're having fun. This has been an amazing conversation, but it doesn't have to be the last one. Would definitely like to check in with you throughout the year, uh, yes. help promote your Jackson, uh, you know, whole Wyoming yoga event. That sounds pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, seriously, you know, take, take what you're offering, see how it impacts my life and share that to keep the uh, abundance uh, thing going. Yeah, that would be amazing. I, I, I look forward to, uh, to seeing your progress and uh, clapping for you because sometimes you, you know, you got to clap for your damn self as Keith says, <laughs> but definitely looking forward to being a cheerleader for you. Cause I think you're going to just, uh, you're going to be surprised. All right. All right. Well, I'm going to take your word for it. Thank you so much for coming on. I mean, uh, it, it's it's been too long, even though it's been a couple of months. Just so much has happened, and I can't wait to see what's in the future for you. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you for having me on. It was no great problem. to see you again. As we say, Oscar Mike Rita, we are Mission Flight. Thank you very much.